Today's lecture is about neutronic calculation lines for reactor design and safety. Lecture 1 out of 3, uh, introduction to lattice code WEMS. We will start here by WEMS. Today's learning goal is um, to become aware of the usability of neutronic calculation lines, uh, word usability here means how to use it, how to validate it, its limits. Um, and to set suitable objectives and constraints for neutronic calculation lines, I recognize how codes are connected in neutronic calculation line and how to construct WIMS input for LATS calculations and recognize different parameters used to model unit cell. Finally, to analyze WIMS output for different purposes and assignments. First, what's the theory behind the calculation lines? If we look to the neutron transport equation, we have mainly three terms. The first term, which represents the leakage term, and the second term is absorption term, and uh, these two terms should equal to the source term. This is a time-independent neutron transport equation. And so if I have neutrons or neutron flux, we have here uh, six degree of freedoms, um, three uh, x, y, and z, and phi also is a variable of E, and omega, which is a solid angle. This solid angle consists of theta and phi. So we have six degree of freedom. If I, I want to calculate the flux at unit volume surrounding a position R <coughs> at certain energy E and with certain direction omega. To solve this equation first, I have to define the source term. Here the source term consists of two terms. The first term represents the group transfer cross sections, which the neutrons at the same position that transfers from any direction omega dash to the direction of interest or any energy E dash to my energy of interest. This is at the same position R. So uh, we call that the group transfer cross section. And the second term depends on the fission, the fission process of post fissile materials and fissionable materials. The fission terms depends mainly on the number of fission interactions that happens at certain position R. And this fission interaction could be happening different at different energy E dash. So we integrate all kind of fission interactions for all energies and that fall according to the spectrum of the uh, neutron generated perfusion which we call it chi spectrum and fall into my energy of interest according to chi spectrum so the neutron transport equation is an integral differential equation we have integration in the source term and we have differentiation. It's not easy to solve it. So we either transfer it to a differential form by keeping the first two terms and transfer the, the source term into um, Bauer series or transfer it to the integral form. If we transfer the or transform the neutron transport equation to the differential form, we can solve it using a method called PN method. You can review this method and all the methods related to solving the neutron transport equation. Or we can transfer or transform the neutron transport equation to the integral form, then uh, solve it by mainly two methods, one of them called SN method 
and the other called collision probability method. To solve the neutron transport equation by these methods, first we need the microscopic cross section and the atom density at the position R. Okay, and, and try to use these microscopic cross sections and atom density to solve this equation to determine the flux. Also, we should have all the other data such as the chi spectrum. Um, solving the neutron transport equation is not easy and time consuming because we represent just one position which is R. Okay, and we have different energy at, at certain R, we have different energies according to the resolution of the solution and also for each energy we have different omegas so um, it is uh, time consuming to solve a huge uh, problem or a huge model such as a reactor in a reasonable time using the neutron transport equation so to solve again the neutron transport equation, we need to introduce the geometry and the initial material composition, which is the atom density or in weight percent, and also the uh, atom density as a function of temperature. If I have a moderator that, and this moderator, its um, density or atom density changes with temperature, we have to identify this. Um, and introducing the library, which you can contains the, the microscopic cross-section and differential cross-section, of course, also, uh, and chi spectrum, fission, uh, fission products. We can solve this transport equation by one of the three methods to find the flux. And also we have, <coughs> we can find the, the interaction rate. Uh, the interaction could be absorption interaction rate or fission interaction rate by multiplying the, macro, the, the suitable microscopic cross-section with the flux. From these two, value, two values, I can calculate from the interaction rate the isotopic compositions. If I have the total number of fission rate as an example, and uh, also I have the uh, fission products uh, like you, you learned it before from the double, double hump curve, you have the uh, isotopic composition for uh, after burnup of uh, fissile material. Also, we can determine the group constants, which is the microscopic cross sections. So, if we look to another equation, which is a simplified version from the neutron transport equation, we already derive the neutron transport equation from Fick's law. Um, and we can reach the same equation using so the solution of the transport equation. If we solve the differential form with BN method, um, the neutron diffusion equation is B1, which is the first approximation to uh, the solution of the neutron transport equation. Uh, solving the neutron transport equation is much easier than the neutron transport. Uh, the neutron diffusion equation is much easier than uh, solving it by a neutron transport. Uh, solving the neutron transport equation because here we are dealing with macroscopic cross section, not microscopic cross section. So here we have the one group or multi group according to the values of G of the diffusion equation. Also, we have here the leakage term and the absorption term and the transfer cross section. We can call both the absorption and the transfer as a removal mechanism for the neutron flux. And we have the source term here also. And here we have chi uh, that belongs to this energy of interest. But here to solve the neutron diffusion equation, we should introduce the macroscopic cross section. We call it the group constants which as an example sigma fission and uh, sigma s from g to g that group transfer cross section sigma absorption of g or dg which is a function also for uh, a function of uh, the scattering cross section or the group uh, transfer cross section or well, the division coefficient so knowing the uh, macroscopic cross sections 
we can introduce it in the library for a diffusion equation after defining the geometry to find also the flux and the interaction rates and we could search for the suitable multiplication factor or the eigenvalue which is here k k just making a balance between the left hand side and the right hand side um, and uh, if I have more more fissions more fissions uh, so uh, k should be larger to uh, just balance the left hand side that's why we call it eigenvalue problem. So we can save time if we use a simplified version for the neutron transport equation to find a simplified geometry, a simplified model for a certain region inside the reactor and calculate the group constants which is the, we call it the diffusion constants or the group constants and to introduce it into the neutron uh, diffusion equation. This will reduce the time for solving the neutron transport equation. We can now solve for the whole reactor in a reasonable time, more reasonable time. So, um, we call that lattice calculations is to make a lattice for a certain region of the reactor of certain fuel composition and certain geometry. This is region is special. It could be different from, from the other or adjacent region. So we can produce less lattice calculation which solving the transport equation to generate the group constants for this position. And also we can calculate these group constants work with Bernoulli. Um, so we can use later these group constants for the transport. So here we transferred or transformed our solution from the transport to diffusion using lattice calculations. The same. If we have uh, again uh, the time independent Monte Carlo, time independence means that all the isotopic composition are the same are the same all the time. No change in the isotopic composition due to Bernoulli. So it's not time dependent. Uh, in, in the time independent Monte Carlo, <coughs> we almost generate uh, uh, gen uh, generating uh, tracks which represent one history for the neutrons and uh, monitor the uh, the uh, these tracks uh, from one cycle criticality cycle by generating all these tracks and until uh, the neutrons either uh, absorb it or escape from the boundary and trying to record the fission positions and generating as we mentioned in, a, in our previous lecture another histories and try to find how the neutrons um, are uh, multiplicated from one cycle to another um, to uh, calculate the k effective and also the flux distribution or power distribution but all these histories represent one neutron it's not time dependent so uh, to solve the neutron uh, 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 to solve the, the uh, to track the neutrons using the time independent Monte Carlo we have to define the geometry and also the initial material composition such as the atom density and the atom density also we could, should consider the eff effect of uh, temperature or also we call it thermal treatment in the Monte Carlo um, uh, especially for the moderators and thermal reactions we have to use the thermal treatment um, also we can introduce the library which contains here also the microscopic cross sections the differential cross sections the chi spectrum using the time dependent Monte Carlo we can calculate the flux everywhere inside the reactor also we can calculate the interaction rate if we return back to the neutron transport equation we can use it as we mentioned before to generate the isotopic composition with time or with burn up and use these steps of burn up as a new new um, uh, isotopic composition for the material card for MCMP.
That's how we can create a time-dependent Monte Carlo. And the, uh, the codes that use time-dependent Monte Carlo have something like that. Like MCMP, we have a code named Origin inside embedded MCMP, which generated um, uh, MCMPX. Um, this code solves the transport equation to, uh, to calculate the pernub and uh, we, uh, we can use it uh, to, to make a time-dependent Monte Carlo calculations. So we can use a Newton transport equation for a simplified geometry, as we said, uh, and for certain position of interest and calculate the isotopic composition with time and introduce this in the material card of Opel MC. So the same histories, we wait until this history is finished, and we can change the atom density with time, which will it change the mean free pass, will affect the mean free pass, the sigma total, sigma total is dependent on the isotopic composition of the atom density, if we change the A, the atom density of the fossil material or for the absorber, up, uh, 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 we can change also the 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 atom density and the mean free pass and the tracks itself the tracks the history itself will it change it which will affect by um uh it will affect the multiplication factor okay after introducing a brief description of the theory behind neutron calculation line how why we need sometimes to integrate between two techniques like solving the diffusion neutron transport equation and then solving the diffusion equation or solving the neutron transport equation and then solving the uh, Monte Carlo method um, now we want to introduce the uh, neutronic calculation lines first if you want to talk about the neutronic calculation lines, first, what is the function of neutronic calculation lines? And what's my objective, my model objectives and constraints? Uh, the functions is mainly, um, we, we need the multi, the, uh, we can't perform all the, uh, the uh, uh, or verify the, all the safety criteria of the reactor experimentally. And we want, sometimes we need to design the reactor. Phase. So we have different functions for um, for uh, using neutronic calculation lines. Uh, the main functions uh, are, uh, this is some of the functions, you can list more than uh, these four functions. Um, number one, verifications of reactor safety criteria. First, we have to make sure that all safety criteria of, of the reactor, uh, as we will uh, talk uh, in a minute, um, uh, all the safety criteria is, um, are um, uh, are uh, verified for all the reactor uh, cycles, for the different cycles or fuel cycles. Um, also, here we have to sometimes we use it to follow uh, the reactor operation or the reactor operation follow up. Um, this process to monitor the reactor core uh, um, uh, from the beginning of cycle to the end of cycle and monitor all the safety parameters and um, another thing is to uh, investigate uh, uh, the modifications if we need to modify something in the reactor uh, or design a new core or um, uh, make um, some modification we have to use neutronic calculation lines. Um, in research reactor, we can use also design and optimization of the research reactor facilities. We can consider a research reactors uh, as a as a neutron source. It is always compact, compact. Uh, the core size is compact to um, to allow more leakage and uh, use these uh, neutrons from the uh, the uh, reactor for what we call it facilities. Facilities it could be um, uh, radiography facility or uh, uh, or a silicon daubing facility, um, and for to reach the optimum 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 performance of these facilities, we can use also design uh, these calculation lines. But we have, in using these calculation lines, we should monitor some objectives and constraints. First, it's validity for this kind of reactor. 
its validity it means it's uh, the, the uh, how i can trust my results compared to the experimental result of the reactor and i can use yeah, i can benchmark my calculations using some experiment inside the reactor or uh, using uh, uh, another benchmark problem that validate my calculation line or validate each code i'm using step by step to validate it should be validated uh, for use in 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 in, uh, in a special reactor i can validate the neutron calculation line for one time of uh, reactors but sometimes it is different from one reactor to another reactor according to if it is a um, light water reactor or fast breeder reactor or uh, can do reactor accuracy and precision uh, if we consider the error from the results from the calculation lines we should monitor the accuracy and precision uh, precision represents the error in my calculation lines and the accuracy how far results are um, uh, far from the um, the experimental result um, also it, sh it should be have a reasonable computational time because uh, performing these functions such as modification and follow-up it cost me money so I need a faster calculation line that comes up with a reasonable um, conservative results uh, um, that I can rely on. Finally, accessibility and usability. Uh, the code should be accessible. I can use it, modify it, make archive of the results, uh, run multi uh, data use friendly uh, that ha ha or has a friendly graphical interface uh, for the input and the uh, output, and it should have a, um, a license for running these codes. Um, uh, so it should be accessible as you can all the time. Uh, and the accessibility here also um, um, means that I can modify a little bit my calculation lines in, in two and new calculation lines uh, uh, upon request. I can add some extra codes or integrate more uh, codes. Uh, so um, that's what I mean by the accessibility. And the usability, the usability again. It depends on its limits, the limits, uh, the, like the error from the fixed error from the calculation line and its validity and uh, uh, if it's friendly to use or not. Uh, and I can run it in a reasonable time compared to the reactor operation follow up as an example. <coughs> If we return back to the neutronic calculation line, in, in our series, we will talk about three main codes. One code, uh, which is called, uh, named uh, WIMS, uh, we will use it for lattice calculation or solving the neutron transport equation by either SM method or collision probability method. The other code uh, named uh, COMSOL, we will use it for solving the diffusion equation. Uh, the diffusion equation and the uh, uh, we will use also open MC which we uh, use back as a time independent Monte Carlo code um, to solve these equations um, uh, or, or, or follow the neutronic calculation line as we mentioned we have to solve the neutron transport equation for simplified geometry for a certain region for the, uh, of the reactor of the reactor to find the uh, here to find the group constants which is the multi-group diffusion constants and uh, i stops inventory we have to identify a model geometry and material composition with temperature and this regarding taking burnable steps burnable steps these i stops inventory will change with certain burnable step and generate another multi multi-group diffusion constants and I stops inventory. So I can control the burn up steps or the time dependent behavior of the reactor through using the WIMS.
generating the multi-group diffusion comes and we can use it later to solve the core calculation we call it core calculation using the multi-group diffusion equation solving the multi-view diffusion equations using this group constants we have to identify the number of groups that i need to solve it to group five group six group uh, model geometry introduce the model geometry and the result will be mainly mainly the multiplication factor of the system or the eigenvalue of the system uh, and the multi-group flux and power distributions it uh, can also calculate the interaction rates by default but mainly the multiplication factor and multi-group flux and power distribution <coughs> also we can introduce these eye stops in inventory uh, the material composition at the material card of open mc and we can go to also the multiplication factor and the flux and power distributions why um, i built two separate calculation lines we will see later what is the advantage of using the first one or the second one but mainly the the the, the diffusion equation it's um, uh, we can solve first for the fusion equation it's very fast and we can get a reasonable result to follow up the core and starting from designing the core even designing the core from the uh, core number one up until we reach the equilibrium core or the end of uh, lifetime of the reactor so if it's very fast calculation we can rely on it to follow up the reactor and make a necessary modification here uh, the Monte Carlo code is uh, taking a um, uh, a lot of time it depends on your in, on, on your resources uh, it depends on your machine the machine that you perform the run on it is, is it workstation mainframe or what it's per processing or single processor to uh, um, uh, the Monte Carlo codes uh, takes a lot of time uh, and uh, but we, we sometimes we need it uh, because of the drawbacks of the um, diffusion calculations as we will mention um, after a while. So we are looking to the reactor geometry inside the calculation lines uh, by different perspectives. Here, if we have whimsy calculation, we can uh, model the the certain certain fuel assembly uh, in the reactor and define its geometry, material composition, and solving the neutron transport equation by SN or collision probability method using WEMS code for different pernum steps to find the multi group cross sections. Uh, but these multi group cross sections um, uh, for a homogenized region. So the multi group cross section for the total cells, that's why we call it cell calculation. So we have to generate homogenized group constants for this using WEMS. So after calculating the neutron flux and the uh, diffusion coefficients, we can uh, homogenize these group cross sections and make homogenization or condensation also to the group structure. So we can use a lot of groups here and uh, 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 less number of group for the homogenized region, which is suitable for the reactor core calculation by console. As an example, um, each uh, this one type of fuel one type of fuel this one type uh, i can use one cell model but if i have another fuel of different enrichment of different enrichment or different material composition I, I i should generate another lattice calculation or group constants for the adjacent regions or the other regions so generating the diffusion co coefficients for all the regions and applying the boundary conditions that we learned before in the diffusion equations that flux, flux is continuous and so on uh, and the flux vanishes as separated uh, lanes or using a certain boundary condition according to uh, your uh, model uh, this will give us the power distribution and flux distribution using console also, I can use this I stops inventory. I don't need to make a condensation to multi-group cross-section. No, I, I need the I stops inventory uh, with burn-up steps. And I can introduce it into the material card of OpenMC. I can use a detailed geometry now to find the multiplication factor and the flux power distribution. 
<coughs> As we mentioned, we will talk first about the functions of a reactors, uh, of a reactor safety criteria, how to verify it. Uh, first, we will introduce what is shutdown margins uh, and how to calculate the difference in multiplication factor of sometimes we call it reactivity. Uh, reactivity, what is reactivity safety factor? We will talk about it. Uh, it depends also in, in calculating the difference in K in, uh, in two runs. Uh, power picking factor, it depends on the flux distribution in the core and the fission, uh, the submission over E for the fission uh, interactions. Uh, and can how to calculate the reactivity feedback coefficients? How to calculate the uh, changes in K or the multiplication factor due to the changes in the temperature in the density of the moderator on the power on the buildup of xenon or samarium or whatever a different you can review uh, the feedback effects from a uh, reactor dynamics or reactor kinetic courses first I will talk about the shutdown margin to calculate the shutdown margin easily using the first kind, which is lattice calculation WIMS or core calculations, or we can use WIMS with OpenMC. We have to calculate the criticality in two stages. First, what is shutdown margin? Here in the reactor core, I have to put an extra mass of uranium-235, uh, extra mass to get a cycle length as uh, one year or something like that. This extra mass, we call it, uh, it's reactivity, uh, we call it uh, the excess reactivity. Uh, this excess reactivity compensated by the uh, partial, partial portion of the rods that inserted in the core. So the excess reactivity equal to the negative reactivity introduced by the inserted part of the uh, control rods. Uh, these uh, portions are just to compensate the excess reactivity in the core. Uh, during the cycle, I should be re removing these control rods or extracting these control rods outside the core unless, uh, until these uh, control rods re reach the top position, then I can stop the cycle and adding a new fresh fuel. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the part of the rod which is greater, uh, which is smaller, for, sorry, in the uh, beginning of cycle, which is a part of the rod which outside, outside the core, we can call it shutdown margin, which is the uh, uh, negative reactivity available for safe shutdown. Uh, of course, um, with the cycle, at the end of cycle, as the control rods moved up, the shutdown margin will getting uh, larger. Uh, so, um, so we can calculate K using WEMS uh, at two different positions. The control rods are in critical positions and the control rod inserted as an example. And we can find the difference in K and we can call it shutdown margin. Um, this could be done easily using um, COMSOL or OBNMC. Uh, but here I can use console. It, 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 the runtime will be different, different from the it first case. Which will be faster. Before introducing the activity safety factor, if we look to one rod, one rod, I will return back to just to show you just one, one rod. If I'm uh, if I want to calculate the wars, the total wars of these rods, this is the total wars, which is consists of the, um, uh, the accessory activity plus the shutdown margin. I can calculate the wars of, uh, of uh, each rod by differential method as an example. Uh, this differential method I can uh, calculate um, uh, starting uh, making a critical position and extracting this rod specially outside the core and then starting to insert this rod inside the reactor by a suitable step and each step I can calculate delta k uh, uh, until the uh, rod reaches the bottom position 
and I can draw this curve. We call it, it's a famous curve called S-curve S <coughs> for the contour rod. This is the intervals, which represents the percentage extraction from the core. And for each uh, one of them, I have worth or reactivity, certain reactivity. If I, I, add, um, if I add all these partial increments of increase, uh, in in, in uh, delta k, I can find finally the total worth, the total worth of the control rod. We call that the S curve. This is for one rod. I can repeat that for all the rods and find the total worth of all rods. Uh, you can review also how we can uh, reactivity could be measured in absolute value, or we can. Uh, uh, we can uh, use the dollar if we if we divide these values by the uh, the uh, the delay neutron fraction uh, or cents uh, or PCM. Some sometimes we use the term PCM. Um, so we can re you can review that and uh, finding this S curve could be achieved also here by these two uh, modes either by diffusion calculation started from one or by a Monte Carlo calculation starting from one. But to calculate the reactivity safety factor, what is the reactivity safety factor? Reactivity safety factor, uh, its definition is very simple, which is the total worth of all the rods divided by the excess reactivity. Or in other terms, I want to say, I want to say that the total worth of the rod is much greater than the excess reactivity, which I'm going to compensate it all over the cycle. So it should be the total worth of the rods which used to compensate the excess reactivity should be greater than the excess reactivity. So that's why the reactivity safety factor is a very important uh, a factor uh, and I can calculate it you, the, by dividing the total worth of the rods uh, divided by the excess reactivity. Sometimes it, uh, it should be greater than 1.5 or according to uh, your type of the reactor this number could be changed also according to the, the safety criteria. All the safety criteria are determined according to the scenario of the accidents and how, the, my, uh, how to make sure that my reactor or my settings are, or safety system settings or all the settings or the limits within the safe envelope. Or, uh, so uh, the reactivity safety factor is a measure of the capability of the rods to compensate the excess reactivity and should be greater than or uh, 1.5 uh, uh, and you can you have all the safety criteria should be verified for all the cycles until the, you finish the lifetime of the reactor or the of the core um, that's why we cannot add sometimes some students um, say okay if i'm adding uh, more uranium or more more um, uh, more amount or more or more mass of the uranium i will get higher 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 uh, cycle lens uh, or uh, longer longer uh, cycle lens yes. but adding a, a new amount of uranium of refined materials uh, you will have a problem with the reactivity safety factor uh, because you have to use another configuration of rods that verify, verify that the reactivity or the reactivity safety factor is almost greater than or equal 1.5. So we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, increasing the excess reactivity without increasing the total worth of the rod. <clears throat> the power peaking factor is an important factor also we have can calculate it by calculating the flux distribution mainly in thermal reactor I'm dealing with thermal flux uh, thermal flux uh, because it's the main source of fission in thermal reactors uh, so calculating the power peaking factor is easy uh, and to calculate the maximum flux and the position of the maximum flux and divide it by the average thermal flux all over the core the core just as a core not the Reflector. Um, uh, so we can calculate the power peaking factor, uh, which represent uh, the hot spot or the hot channel inside my reactor, which will, will be linked later to the thermal uh, hydraulic group. Uh, sorry, thermal hydraulic uh, calculations. Um, 
because uh, this is a position which has the maximum power compared to all other position inside the reactor sometimes they are using to they are calculating the power picking factor on the level of the assembly itself and the uh, like the uh, the uh, maximum power for in in certain assembly um, uh, divided by the average power all over the assembly or the flux um, uh, but uh, to to find the position of hot channel we have to make the averaging of the flux over the core and find the maximum flux in the core and try to find the power peak in fact uh, this could be done by monitoring the flux distribution as a result from console or open MC and in both cases we can calculate the power peak in fact Uh, reactivity feedback of fission. So here uh, it's a critical point. A critical point. Why? Because um, to to account for the reactivity feedbacks or its effect on the multiplication factor, you should start here from lattice calculations uh, for each temperature or each density or each xenon composition. Here in the lattice calculation, we have different multi-group diffusion connoissance and we have different i stops inventory so you have to make different model using lattice calculation not just to only for the fuel of the certain composition like this one but also for this fuel in different environments like the change in the temperature or the density of the moderator or the power or the xenon concentration or samarium concentration or whatever so this is how we can calculate uh, we have two models if uh, as an example if i want to calculate the 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 effect due to the change in temperature first i will generate uh, 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 when the model at low power or, uh, or lower temperature and calculate k effective for the core uh, from this uh, neutron uh, multi-group diffusion constants and after that i can use a higher temperature a higher temperature and then calculate another multi-group diffusion coefficient and calculate k effective uh, here if i have two steps i can subtract uh, both from other uh, and get the um, uh, get the negative feedbacks of the reactor due to the change of certain interval of temperature according to the step of temperature that i'm taking also the same uh, for the density sometimes the temperature and density is are linked uh, if I'm talking as an example for the moderator, the temperature of the moderator and the density of the moderator are linked. So I can I cannot change the temperature and keeping the density the same. I should change the density and the temperature. In the reactor operation follow-up, in the reactor for operation follow-up. Um, here I want to calculate the cycle length, the effect of certain modification and the burn-up distribution to, uh, to know when I have to discharge this fuel uh, assembly from the core. If I have a limit from, as an example for the material, from the material science, so as the average discharge burn-up uh, should be uh, uh, 50 as an example uh, or uh, 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 this average uh, uh, charge burn up uh, uh, so the burn up distribution should be monitored all over the cycle and uh, to find the history of the burn up for a certain fuel assembly to remove it in a reasonable time and also uh, um, knowing when i have to put a fresh fuel elements inside the core uh, to decide the refueling strategy the refueling strategy uh, we talked in the previous lecture about the uh, about the different uh, refueling strategies and we can choose a suitable one if i'm a designer of a new core i can choose a suitable one uh, the term suitable one uh, here uh, it means that all the safety uh, or uh, uh, all the um, the criteria as uh, the uh, uh, are verified the safety criteria of the reactor is verified all over the lifetime of the core um, uh, here also uh, if i have a burn it fuel after removing the fuel assembly from the core and move it to a storage or fuel storage tank i have to uh, prevent um, 
the criticality in the storage tank so I, so I have to allocate certain position for the fuel elements uh, and um, uh, maybe separated by water or something but it shouldn't achieve the criticality so here but also I have to calculate using Kirk, another core calculation to prove that the uh, this configuration for the full fuel storage tanks uh, don't reach the criticality I can do this using console and Monte Carlo calculation in both cases uh, the, the main difference is the time in the research in research reactor facilities design and optimization like if if this in core experiment like experiment for producing said certain radioactive uh, radio I stop uh, we call it if it's inside the core we call it fixed experiment it its worth will affect the safety of the reactor so I have to calculate the worth of this experiment uh, um, and sometimes it will be sometime sometimes it it is one of the design based uh, accident of the reactor so we should know it's worse uh, because if, if this radiation box uh, remove, uh, is removed from the reactor it will add a positive reactivity um, due to the, the less absorption inside the core um, <clears throat> also we have to calculate the neutron flux spectrum the word spectrum here is it means but I, I, sometimes I'm, I'm, I, I want to produce a certain or, or a certain radio isotope or use uh, certain facilities that needs uh, epithermal neutrons more than thermal neutrons or needs faster neutrons so I have to uh, do this calculation to calculate the neutron spectrum at certain positions inside the reactor and all, uh, also how to cause <coughs> or how to make a spectrum shift how to use some other techniques to make a spectrum shift like increasing the thermal neutrons as an example in some reactors they are they are using in the, some research reactors they are using what we call a thermal uh, thermal column uh, the main function if this thermal column is thermalize more neutrons or getting rid uh, of uh, more fast neutrons uh, that's why uh, we call it spectrum shift because we are uh, shifting the spectrum from the normal spectrum inside the core to more normalized neutrons or sometimes we can use what we call it a commonly call it in, inside the reactor a source like uh, the hot neutron source or cold neutron source the main function of the cold neutron source is to moderate the, uh, uh, the neutrons or thermal neutrons uh, using liquid hydrogen or any moderator at very very low temperature uh, to the to the cold neutron which is have more or less energy and uh, bigger wavelengths according to the application of interest um, <clears throat> or using a hot neutron source like a hot graphite if, if uh, I exposing the neutrons to hot graphite and penetrating hot graphite its energy will shift up we call it hot source so sometimes I want to deal with the, sh the spectrum and the change it a little bit uh, outside the reactor uh, a spectrum at beam tubes ports here is a spectrum at beam tubes uh, ports a beam tubes uh, is a guide for neutrons to take it outside the uh, the reactor uh, shield uh, or the reactor shield and this uh, this calculation is not easy to be done using a core calculation because uh, as we mentioned before uh, I have for the Monte, uh, for the core calculation or multi-group diffusion equation I have to define the boundary conditions that the fluxes vanish at the exploited distance surrounding the core but taking or tracking the neutron uh, at the pin port it means that I want to solve this this uh, diffusion equation uh, for the whole reactor is not easy and uh, I, the error will be um, uh, unreasonable so here the Monte Carlo techniques is better for calculating the neutron flux or the spectrum outside uh, the PIM port and also for the design for the facilities itself outside the core um, 
a shielding design also I can use the shielding design to the select the best uh, thickness for my shield to uh, reduce the, the dose to the acceptable uh, limit and this calculation also could be done using Monte Carlo techniques facility design uh, also, I can do in, in the researcher actors the the, the always mo uh, upgrading their facilities. Uh, the word upgrading here um, uh, means uh, that I want to get a, a more yield, high efficiency by doing some modifications. This modification could be uh, done using uh, extra research extra research for the performance of certain facility and modify it and uh, get um, uh, the, the more yield of certain eye stop or more yield of the design, uh, desired neutrons or something like that. Um, now we will talk about let's code WEMS. Uh, WEMS and is uh, one for the improved uh, multi-group uh, scheme. Uh, one for here at the place in uh, in UK, which the WEMS could start to be developed. Uh, first, we have to look uh, to the WEMS as a transparent box. Um, if we want to solve the transport equation by SN method or by collision probability method. Uh, first, we have to introduce the uh, initial uh, material composition and lattice geometry uh, for a certain, to simulate certain uh, uh, part inside the reactor core. And uh, here I have uh, uh, what I call a library uh, that contains uh, the uh, microscopic cross sections uh, for the version that we will use here it contains uh, 69 uh, groups uh, uh, of cross section microscopic cross section and also have the uh, chi spectrum and fission products yield uh, and these uh, cross section could be tubulated uh, according to different temperatures and uh, resonance parameters uh, which are related to these temperatures um, if we solve the uh, transport equation as we said we will get K if, uh, infinity, the infinite multiplication factor which represents the material packing and the flux distribution and uh, if we introduce the uh, this uh, two terms we can get homogenized uh, microscopic uh, cross sections and uh, this uh, homogenized microscopic cross sections or the material packing uh, uh, and the geometrical packing uh, can be uh, uh, used to uh, uh, calculate the leakage calculations to find the effective effective multiplication factor and the flux distribution. Uh, the flux distribution introduced from the uh, the first kind of calculation for infinite cell or for the effective with taking care of puckling, we get the uh, reaction rate. This reaction rate for different burn up steps. I can define the different burn up steps. Uh, and getting the uh, isotopes inventory after this burn up step to introduce it to again into the material composition and solve the neutron transport equation for phi and k and also the group constants which is uh, could, could be extracted from the uh, interaction rate uh, for a certain groups of interest or energy group or uh, gr groups of interest which is here 69 uh, energy group we will start first with lattice geometry and um, we will move step by step to cover all the scheme here first we will uh, talk about the lattice geometry here <coughs> I will use the uh, cluster option uh, 
which consists I first if I have a fuel assembly for uh, a pressurized water reactor like the famous one for the uh, pressurized water Westinghouse design which is 17 by 17 uh, fuel uh, rods or by taking uh, the uh, here in our example we will take the example for VVR 1000 um, uh, I should approximate the geometry a little bit uh, to facilitate the solution because I, I will get a homogenized solution I don't care about detail uh, but the first rule is to keep is to keep the um, uh, fuel to moderate ratio um, conservative from the original uh, detailed model to my WIMS model. In WIMS we are starting uh, starting to build first alanine. One of them if we take this annulus as an example it should represent the different the different uh, rings here represent the annulus that we will put later inside it the the fuel uh, rods. Um, after that we have to build what we call it array. Array uh, could be used to define the positions of these rods, just the positions, not the details of the rod. The position of these rods in, in, inside each annulus. So I, I, I can build it by defining a new radius, which intermediate radius between these two annulus or in the middle of this uh, annulus I can define it and define the positions that I will put later the uh, the uh, rods after that after defining the the annulus and putting the number of rods that I need inside this annulus okay uh, and the angle and the uh, and I can give each one a different a different uh, number and defined later for taking rod sub is defined each region or each position here with rod sub which may contain different materials so I can put here like an example a fuel of a certain enrichment and put in another one a uh, fuel that contain the uh, burnable absorbers or different enrichment so I can use a rod sub to built what's inside this position here if I have as an example I have a clad uh, or uh, and I have uh, after that um, a gap I have uh, fuel material so I can put the details of the thickness of each region I can vary that from one position to another also but Generally speaking, in, in the same assembly, in the same assembly, usually I have the same enrichment. Uh, so the main difference will in the region which I have some burnable absorbers, like the case of VVVR 1000, I have in, in one of these annulus, uh, 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 I have fuel uh, rods that contain some uh, burnable absorbers. Uh, to increase the cyclons. If I look to the detail geometry of VVR 1000 um, uh, hexagon or, uh, or, uh, or assembly, as I mentioned, I have I should have first to keep the fuel to moderator ratio the same. Uh, how to move from this geometry to this geometry is assembly in three steps. To build the annuli, annuli first, or uh, 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 the annuli, uh, this is the first annulus, this is the second annulus, this is the third, the fourth, the seventh, and so on. How to build it? First, I have to conserve the area. Area. If I look to the area of this red hexagon, this red hexagon, I have to find its area and build a circle that have the same area to symbol after that if I want to build another that represents the next row uh, the next row I have here how many hexagons one two three four five six uh, I have six 
and, and one inside. So the sum now is seven. If I found the area of these seven hexagons, small hexagons, I can convert the same with the same area to find the radius of the next the next analysis. So I can build each one of these regions or arrays into different alnai of different radiuses but with conserving the area. After that, I can build the position of each, I can build the position of each one. As an example, here using the array. In, in one of these array, like this one, which is one, two, three, four, five. The fifth array, if we multiply, one, two, three, four, five. I have a certain numbers in this orange row or array that is um, have certain number of fuel assembly I have to choose its positions here like if I have eight I have to distribute these eight positions with angles because sometimes sometimes I have here the, the arrangement in, in this size is different than the arrangement in this side or the material composition may different so I can put three red and four uh, three red or four red red positions and four green position to represent another material of different composition and each one I can using the subroad to define clearly how it's different that's how to build the fuel assembly building the fuel assembly in this way uh, using this way I can model it using an, an more than one uh, uh, model using WEMS I, I choose the uh, character you can use another mo uh, modes and you can try and you will find uh, some difference in the in the uh, in the results um, you can compare it and benchmark it to find the more accurate uh, result for your calculation line later after that so that's how to build the geometry of uh, WIMS and you can you uh, see these instructions inside the manual now we will move to the annulus first uh, I sent you to you an Excel sheet that contains the uh, how to calculate it simply first I have to know the pitch of the uh, which is the different uh, the distance between two centers of two adjacent uh, hexagons we call it patch it, if it's 1.275 uh, so I can calculate the area of this hexagon knowing this distance simply from uh, geometry mathematics it's a simple equation and after that if I know the total number of rods in each one of these arrays and adding it to because I, I want to calculate the total area inside it so I have to add all the area inside the area of interest okay so if I found the area of one hexagon and knowing the number of hexagons so I can just multiply the number of hexagons by the area of one hexagon to get the area of the whole region if, the, if it is the region that bounded by blue array here, it should be this area. I can transfer this area into annulus of certain radius, which this radius makes the area the same. So I can assume that this area is the same area of the annulus. So from knowing the area of the annulus, I can get its radius simply for each of the regions if I'm converting the Excel sheet into numbers I get the area of one hexagon here in the first row number of row one in the second it is six but the total will be seven in, uh, which is one inside and six outside 
for this region so I have 7 and the area is 7 multiplied by the area of 1 hexagon so I get this number this number is the same area of the a circle so I can get the radius of the circle to define the radius of the angulus and so on until I finish the last region of our stuff. So that's how to define Alinai uh, or, uh, or the key word for WIMS is Anilus. I can put Anilus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up to Anilus 11 we have, because I have 11 different arrays. Uh, so I have 11 Anilus, each one has a radius. Uh, uh, starting from uh, 0.6 to up to 12 and the initial material used here is water I will define it later as water uh, this material is just the surrounding material which will be the surrounding material of the rod sub so now I define the alina after that the array the array simply is to find the intermediate the intermediate radius between inside each is at the middle at the middle of each uh, annulus so if i have the different radiuses for the one the anuli is like that by the equation i can calculate the the just the radius at the middle of this alinus, at the middle, because this will be the radius where I will distribute distribute the positions of fuel rods. So I can find this R simply by using mathematics, and after that, after that, I can put the number of rods in each array. Here in the first array, I have one rod because I have just one hexagon. In the second array, which is the yellow one, I have the same number as this one, which is six array. So I have to put first the, uh, the intermediate uh, radius uh, at the middle of each uh, annulus. Uh, after that, the number of rods so the array consists of the first one, the second one, and the number of rods, number of rods in each array. After that, how these rods are, are um, uh, distributed according to the angle, angle theta here. So the array consists of intermediate radius, number of rods, and how, what is the theta? regarding this number of rods if all the rods are the same as I, I if I put all the rods the same with the same material composition and I put eight WIMS will distribute these eight cells uh, to make 360 degree uh, here in and um, in, in, in the angle definition in, in WIMS is in radian it's not degree by the way so you have to uh, change the angle from um, from uh, degree to radian uh, um, here in the first uh, assembly I do assume as what one, one of the assemblies I have more than what more than uh, one of rod types so I can choose a theta for each one the, the theta if I have for this annulus I, I divide it into four different rods the first one four different these four different rods will be repeated until I fill the whole annulus the first the first one has zero degree and the second one is a radiance of each one have different angle here I, I use the word radians uh, 360 uh, divided by 24 because the, the total sum of the num these numbers is 24 so I choose different angles these angles make different different arrays each array will 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 have sub different subrods because for each array I have subrods so I, if I divide one of the arrays 
with angles i have to define sub rods for each angle defining sub rods with with different angles could allow me to change the material composition from one region to another region so here I start to build the array. I take different radius, uh, radii, which each one of them is the intermediate region of each annulus. And each one have number of rods. And these rods arranged by theta, if theta is equal to zero. So I will divide 360 by the number of rods and I will distribute this rod. But if I, 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 I wait for here in, in this array, which have this this difference uh, it has 24 but I, def I, I divided this 24 in four groups each group has four set so I will start to build one from this and the second and the third and the fourth and start the, the next one two 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 and three with the same angle okay and I can write it like this, array 1, array 2, array 5, up to array 12, each array, it could be option here, if you look at the manual, option 1 means I'm building rings, because I have other options, um, uh, the geometry here is rings, for I, I bought here 1, this ring contains how many rods, one rod, six rods, twelve rods, and so on, the radius of, uh, of the in intermediate uh, radius uh, or uh, inside the middle of the uh, annulus, this is the radius, and set equals zero. But here in array five, which may contain a permeable absorber, I put uh, one two, three, four. It is, I, I divided these arrays into four angles. All of them has the same. Here I have 4.6, which is the intermediate radius. Here I have 4.6. All of them has a 4.6. And this one also has 4.6. All of these uh, uh, arrays or segments have the same radius so it is almost the same array but if it is different material I should give it different name in this uh, uh, arrays it has the same material but here I will make it another array with the same radius but different material different material it could be uh, uranium that co contains burnable absorbers as an example so after defining the leader, I put the theta here, I put the first theta, second theta, third theta, and finally the fourth theta, which is the beginning, is zero theta. I take it zero, after that this one, this one, this one. But I give this one different array name because I will put inside it, inside it, a different rod. But these three, I will put the same material, so I put them in the same array because, as I mentioned, if I want to, to use different subrod, it should be for different array. Okay, or vice versa. So here I defined it, the array and I put it the subrod with theta that I know. Now I'm ready to build the rod sub. The rod sub, which is the fuel elements itself, it's very simple to add it because I know the number, I just, each one consists of two radii here. This radius is the radius of the fuel uh, inside the fuel rod and the clad radius. So I built two regions with two different materials. If I can build three regions, if I put the radius of the fuel, the, the radius of the gap, the radius of the uh, clad, as an example, I can build three regions. If the, if the gap uh, uh, doesn't affect my results, uh, so I can omit the gap and build just the fuel and the clad as an example. You can check that. Uh, 
in some region which is number six this one which is theta zero which i decided before to put inside it the uranium with burnable absorbers uh, i take more division i can make take more division in the absorption to recognize the burn up to recognize just to recognize the burn up distribution of the burnable absorbers. If I want to look in details inside one rod, I can use virtual, virtual segments. Like if the fuel radius is one centimeter as an example. If I want to, to see what is inside this one centimeter, I can divide this one centimeter radius into segments, like 0.2 segments. Uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 10 are you reach point. It is the same material. I will define it. I will define it later using the same material. But the uh, results from WEMS will be for each segment of them. I can recognize the burn up, the burn up inside each segment. So here inside the burnable absorbers with the array that contains the burnable absorbers, I will talk. I will take more uh, segments to investigate the distribution of the burnable absorbers radially inside one figure rod. Um, so after that I can get subrod. For subrod 1 it means for array 1 up to array 12. So for each array I should define subrod. Subrod 1 which is for array 1 have two rings one of them which is the fuel radius and the clad radius uh, sorry the fuel radius and the clad radius region number one region number two region number one which point three is the fuel radius point four is the clad radius and this region number one region number two have different materials in the material card rater, we will define this material one as a fuel and material two as the clad, as an example. If we look to root number five, which is array number five that contains different angles, by the way, for all the angles except one, we have two different one and two. One, which is a fuel, material number one, two is the clad. But for 12, which have the same radius, by the way, for the array 12, which have the same, this array has the same radius as array 5, but here I have different material, 1 and 3. 3 here could be another clad. Another clad, if I'm using different clad, for the same rods. Uh, if I want to do, use different burnable absorbers as an example, I have to omit this one and put three. And material three now will be the material that contain burnable absorbers. Okay, but in this example, I just removed one and put a different clad. Yeah, yeah, you have to look at it. What, 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 is, what is the purpose of your model? But that's how you can change the material inside uh, each rod. Now we can define the uh, the array and uh, uh, the alumni and array and finally the road subs. So we get the final uh, uh, the final geometry description of the lattice. This lattice, the main rule, as I mentioned, that the fuel to moderator ratio is conserved because I am taking care care to, to make the area is conservative. Okay. And now I want, when I want to solve the uh, using uh, WEMS, I want to do to make segments, segments or meshes for the geometry. And also I can make segments in the energy. I call it energy groups. I don't have to solve the neutron transport equation for, for 69 groups, as I mentioned before. Uh, so I can use meshes to devise the geometry and energy groups to define the energy. Now we will talk about the meshes. Each, each one of the arrays could be divided into meshes. 
this uh, method and if in case of collision probability method the mesh interval should be less than two scattering mean free path if the, scat the scattering mean free path is almost a uh, certain number i have to uh, the mesh interval should be less than uh, two scattering mean free pass you can use approximate calculations to uh, first to define the number of meshes and uh, if you get certain uh, 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 certain uh, errors from the output you can increase the number of meshes to get a better result and after a while increasing the number of uh, meshes will not give you uh, more accuracy uh, DSN method, the, the mesh interval should be less than one transport mean uh, free pass so you have to decide the suitable mesh for the, um, the, the collision probability method or the DS, uh, DSN method uh, here, here I have LNI, 12 LNI, each one will have number of meshes I increase a little bit the meshes here uh, as an example, I can increase the number of meshes in certain region uh, according to according to the material in this region. Because here uh, I said it is related almost to the uh, scattering mean free pass, and I can use the uh, the scattering mean free pass from one run from one run as a first guess for me to get um, the suitable meshes that should be used. Um, uh, uh, after that, after defining the meshes, now I have I had built uh, uh, this geometry, and each side, each array, I take some meshes. Now we finished building the uh, geometry here. The black rods mean it. It may mean uh, some rods that contains different burnable absorbers. After finishing the geometry, now we will move to the initial material composition. I thought initial it is without burn up. Now we didn't perform any burn up calculation, but first we want to define the initial material composition. If I have different materials, from the rod sub as an example, I put material one and I know that material one will be the fuel element as an example. And the material number two will be the clad, material number three will be the moderator, material number four will be something like that. So uh, each material have number, so I have to put the same number here. If I put it in sub rod as material one, it should be used here material one. A minus one here, I could, uh, I can put the density uh, or minus one. If I put the density, I have to put the isotopic fraction in weight percent. But if I put it minus one here, it means that I should define it in an atom percent. After that, I had I should put the temperature. The temperature here means that when WEMS runs, it will cool the microscopic cross sections and uh, the data from the library for certain temperature. For certain, because as I mentioned before, these uh, libraries is stipulated according to the temperature in Kelvin. So I have to put the temperature as a that is a fuel as an example. I put the temperature, and one here means this is a fuel. So one is fuel, two is uh, clad, three is the, is the moderator, four means um, coolant. So the spectrum here will be filled. This is the spectrum calculations. And I have here the material numbers, it, it will be according to keys. This keys is inside the WIMS input or the WIMS uh, manual. So you have, you have to choose the material here. 235.4 is the uh, uranium-235. And this is the atom percent. And here, this is the key for uh, uranium-238 and the atom percent and the key for the oxygen and the atom percent and plutonium here the plutonium doesn't exist at the beginning if i'm starting from a fresh core there is no plutonium but i have to put it in a very very tiny or small very small uh, concentration to uh, allow the build up later for plutonium so here i put i put uh, plutonium the 239 uh, at very very low e to the minus 20 
uh, atom percent and also the xenon can be uh, used uh, with very 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 low uh, concentration or any ion stop um, uh, after that if I look to the material 2 material 2 he, here I defined it by density material 2 which is the clad and the temperature in Kelvin and the spectrum is for clad it has uh, as an example um, zircaloy uh, with different uh, isotopic composition our atom densities h 91 56 52 uh, uh, after that material 3 I have minus 1 it means uh, that I put uh, here I put it in, in, in weight percent because I use the, the density but here I will use the atom percent and that is the degree of the uh, temperature of the moderator uh, which is water in our case uh, and I should put this number if I put this number as 1 uh, it means this uh, it contains uh, fuel so 3 here as I mentioned before I put it to allocate a position that have that have uh, a certain burnable absorbers so it is fuel also, but have different atom percent, which contains also that gadolinium. As an example, he is a burnable absorber. I, I defined it uh, 157 and 1155. These uh, are uh, gadolinium isotopes. Um, so I can use more than fuel material cars fuel because the spectrum here is one and the spectrum here is one I, it means that this will be fuel but with different material composition so different material should be should given different numbers material number four i give it also here in atom density and this is the it is, it is the moderator or uh, the moderator and it has uh, a, a oxygen and hydrogen this is the key for hydrogen and this is the key for hydrogen with certain atom percent and also it may contain boron uh, because um, in some uh, pressurized water reactor we are using boron to control the reactivity of the reactor so you can put here the also inside the uh, the moderator the uh, boron uh, uh, of certain isotopic composition if i increase this boron concentration of course the result will change so here I have many many parameters many many parameters and it will affect greatly the the feedback calculations if I'm I'm, I'm what I want to uh, to calculate as an example the temperature feedback coefficient I can make a single run for this temperature and the changes temperature and see the change in the results in the group conoscence and the calculation using console or obnimacy um, so i have different parameters here like the 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 uh, atom uh, sorry the temperature and also if i'm using water this atom density will change by the way uh, because uh, here if i use draw of water as one it will be different at different temperature if I change the temperature of water its density will be changed and of course is the isotopic composition also will be changed so this will uh, um, give me the feedbacks due to the change in the in the density of water uh, so this is but we call it all of this we call it initial material composition <coughs> There is some materials that have a resonance treatment inside the library for certain isotopes. This resonance treatment is due to the resonance escape probability. And as we know that the uh, resonance uh, or uh, Doppler effect uh, uh, affected by the, the temperature of the fuel itself. Uh, so the broadening of resonance uh, will affect the absorption cross-section so uh, uh, for certain isotopes uh, this uh, 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 the in the resonance region there is a population with temperature with different temperature because this will affect 
uh, the results due to uh, increasing the temperature uh, uh, may lead to uh, increasing or broadening of the resonance and the decrease of the resonance escape probability. So um, here um, uh, we have resonance treatments. So I can put some isotopes in a card named react uh, and use the different keys here uranium 235 we defined it in the material car as 235.4 but if i put 235.1 it may call the resonance treatment or integral from the library so i put it in in a word react here i added the different isotopes that may affected by the temperature change due to the resonance broadening or Doppler effect. Another thing related to the material, uh, we call it Dankov. It's, it's related to the distribution of fuel rods and the material both. Uh, we call it Dankov correction or Dankov factor. Uh, in the manual, the the recommended uh, value for Dankov. Uh, uh, factor is 0.625 uh, 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 but we will see user uh, later how to uh, to calculate it using Monte Carlo code first we will explain what is the shadowing effect the shadowing effect you know what is the dank of correction and what is the of factor and uh, the shadowing effect if if I uh, if I put a I, I, I taking in consideration this special rod which is in red if it is isolated rods, isolated here means that all neutrons that escape, escape from the rod to the moderator, then it, it get moderated and return it back to fuel to cause another fission because the fission cross section for thermal for thermal neutrons is much greater. So the mechanism is to let the neutron escape fast escape fast to to escape from the resonance by the way because the neutron escape fast from the rod and moderate it to the thermal region outside the rod and return it back to the rod with thermal region. so this mechanism affect the resonance escape probability uh, because uh, if i have more moderation i will I will let more fast neutrons to escape and moderate it and return it back as a thermal. So uh, we uh, uh, we reduced the the effect of uh, uh, absorption in the resonance region of uranium 235 mainly in thermal reactor. Um, the shadowing effect happens when this rod is not insul uh, isolated but surrounded by other rods so there is a probability that one of the neutron fast units that escape from here may enter the other rod may enter the other rod it's not thermalized and returned back to cause fission in the same rod no but but what happens it, it may enter with a certain probability by the way if i have sigma total and this lens i have this probability so i have probability that this, this neutron will this neutrons here is lost from the concern of the rod in red because it enters another rod so as this rod absorb the neutron from this one or reduce the scape probability of resonance for this one we call that the shadowing effect it or in other words the word shadowing effect it means that other fewer rods make a shade that reduce the number of neutrons that return back to this fuel so that is we call it the shadowing effect dank of correction if we take correction in the fraction of the neutrons here, dank of correction is a fraction of decrease in number of neutrons. What the decrease? What is the decrease due to the existence of other fuel rods 
adjacent to the one of interest. The Ankov factor is 1 minus this. With the, here, the, the fraction decrease. Uh, here, the fraction decrease in the number of neutrons entering the region. If I 1 minus this, it's the real fraction that enter the region. It's not the decrease, the real one. We can use, as I mentioned, Monte Carlo technique to define exactly how to calculate, and we will take uh, one assignment in, in OpenMC lecture to calculate the Dankov factor from this. Uh, calculate. There are different calculations for calculating a uh, Dankov factor, and it is a correction factor, a correction factor uh, used to adjust all the data to the real situation due to the shadowing effect caused by the adjacent throws to the road of interest. Now we finished all what is related to the, the lattice geometry and initial material composition. And we have to solve the transport equation by SN method or collision probability method or I have in, in the manual more uh, methods. Uh, but um, to solve the neutron neutron uh, transport equation, as I mentioned, WEMS has, WEMS has many, many uh, groups, 69 groups. How it comes? If I look to the uranium 235 cross section, I just plot it from the ENDF uh, site of the IEA uh, recently, 14 September 2000. Uh, 19. Uh, if I if I plot the uh, the the cross section of uh, uranium to 39, I have as an example the maximum energy for MEV and the resonance almost ended at 9.118 kV and the uh, started at 4 eV. So we call that uh, thermal region. Epithermal and fast, as an example. Um, if I want to define uh, the 69 groups from 10 MEV, first I will begin with a start with the fast. The first one, uh, which is this range, I will divide it according to the decrease, the neutron pole fast according to the chi spectrum, as I mentioned before, with an average energy almost 1.98. Uh, MEV, uh, so it, uh, 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 the neutron who, which exists in 10 MEV or larger, maybe its probability is very low, but if I want to divide this range of energies, it will be according to the lethargy. Lethargy, the term lethargy means the increase in the loss of energy. The increase in the loss of energy, uh, as we know in the slowing down, uh, slowing down theory or uh, age theory, we we talked about the slowing down and the lethargy. We want to choose a term that increase with decreasing the temperature uh, or the decreasing the um, the uh, the energy of the neutron. So we choose the lethargy. And we know that lethargy is the log uh, 10 MeV, which is the initial temperature, or uh, sorry, the initial energy was 10 MeV divided by the energy of interest. So from this lecture, from this equation, we can get E in terms of U. Instead of U in terms of E, we can get E in terms of U. And here we take a groups with 0.5. It means that it will lose half, half, 0.5. Lethargy. So we take a step 0.5. So if we put uh, u equal 0.5, I will get e1. After that, if I want to put another 0.5, I will get e2. So if we made that, we starting the group by 10 mev, and I put this 10 mev, which is this one, exponential minus 0.5, which is u. After that, I will get the second number, which is c1, the next energy. I can use this next energy here and use it also exponential and so on. And this is the number from 10 mev to this number. And from this number 
to this number I'm from this number to this, until I reach this number which 9.118 cave okay so I divide it this fast region into 14 group if I look to the other group it with the same philosophy it's taken on the average lethargy 0.5 it will be almost 13 group in some region the lethargy changes a little bit because this region may integrate may contain certain resonance it will be some regions we, we, we can take a special resonance treatment the lethargy uh, you we could be 0.9 but it's almost on the average 0.5 and we have 42 thermal group so the when the consists of 96 groups uh, 14 groups for fast and it is tem time, uh, temperature independent because fast neutrons will see the medium as free gas uh, uh, it will not recognize the bonding between atoms in, in inside a molecule as an example so uh, uh, for for and the uh, so it is temperature independent in the intermediate region and in the thermal region we have temperature dependent groups it means that the cross section inside this group may vary according to the temperature and we are commonly use a code with no a code named uh, enjoy this code may generate uh, uh, this cross section for 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 different temperature but the main library existing in WIMS itself contains different uh, uh, the evaluations uh, for certain isotopes at different temperatures especially the isotopes that has resonance absorption and the, the isotopes that need self scattering or uh, that uh, affect the mo uh, molecules of these isotopes affect uh, the thermal neutron scattering uh, this is group from 114 and this is from 14 to 27 we just add these numbers and this is from 28 to 69 we are using two cards one of them cards that means input line in WEMS uh, one of them called a few groups and one of them called the partitions uh, the few group cards is used to define the energy groups I can solve not not using the 69 groups I can just say from group 1 to group uh, 15 it's one group so I take just the three groups fast thermal so I can use three groups or use five groups or use six groups uh, the using of groups um, should be uh, should be according to the isotopic composition of the fuel matrix at all uh, not just as the fuel element and the clad and so on because i have different isotopes of different uh, absorption cross sections so i should benchmark benchmark uh, the group boundaries the group boundaries uh, um, the, to match the isotopes of interest inside the reactor because I can I can consider that all cross sections are plotted are plotted in the same graph so so uh, how I can devise this graph to approximate and say okay the cross section here in this group is almost the same um, I'm using this few groups I use this group structure here few groups I am using from 0 to 5 it means I'm, I'm starting from uh, the small number start from first region 0 to 5 and 5 from to 9 9 to 15 15 up to I reach the final should be 69 which is 69 groups now I have a number of groups 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 groups so now I'm using 13 groups out of 69 groups I can use 3 groups or 4 groups 
uh, as I mentioned before, the accuracy of the transport equation depends on the details. Also, and the runtime depends on the detail. I can use the 69 group, by the way. Uh, it will cost a, lo a little bit time. Uh, and um, uh, using a few group, uh, few group uh, uh, will make it faster. And uh, uh, partition card partition card is, is the we can use the few groups and the partition cards are the same because the partition card in the reaction edit in the reaction edit uh, which is uh, solved for the resonance uh, effect uh, we can use a partition group partition group could be the same group structure or could be another group structure but it should be uh, extracted from the original one which is a few group so I can use in, as an example I can use this the same number in the partition card but uh, saying from 5 to 15 and omit 9 but it should be extracted from the same few group card it should be less but extracted from the same boundaries of the few group card after that we already solved the transport equations we dial for the microscopic cross-section for different temperature and materials and uh, if we want to introduce what's in red, uh, the rest is buckling, the buckling. If assume, if I assume the reactor, the whole reactor, the buckling, I have, it indicates the leakage, which is the geometrical buckling, indicates the leakage. I have axial buckling, if I consider the VVR1000 as a big cylinder, as a big cylinder, so I have axial buckling, and radial puckling. Uh, if it is ideal cylinder, the shape here will, will be almost cosine and in radial will be pestle function if it's ideal cylinder. And if I consider the whole reactor is like this, first I have to convert my VVR1000 reactor into the cylinder. Um, uh, if I have the fuel assembly patch is 23.5, and I, I can find the area of one assembly. If I multiply it by the total number of assemblies, I can get the total area of the core. From this total area of the core, I can find the equivalent radius for the cylinder by conserving the area. Uh, this equivalent uh, radius, I can find from it the equivalent diameter of, of the core, 3.12. Okay, this 3.12 meter is the equivalent diameter for this cylinder. And the active core height is 3.53, which is the active, uh, the length of the active portion of the fuel, which is contains the fuel, uh, fuel rod, which contains the fuel. It's 3.53 meter. Now I have radius, equivalent diameter, and radius and equivalent height so i can found the uh, also i have a extrapolated distance due to the presence of the water here up and down and radially as a reflector so the extrapolated distance for water i can add it here here uh, 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 as 19.2 to the active core height and to the core diameter to get the active height which is RE uh, sorry uh, HE and RE low active radius with the presence of extrapolated distance to account for the presence of the reflector after that I can find the buckling in Z direction and buckling in R direction and the square of the buckling in Z and R. In, in, in WEMS we are introducing the buckling in terms of square, square buckling uh, in the radial and in the uh, uh, Z direction. And we can write it in the card like buckling equal this number which is the square of the buckling in radial direction and the, in the Z direction. <coughs> now 
We finished already the initial material composition, the geometry, the library, and the buckling. Uh, we know we want to introduce the Bernab steps to calculate different different eye stops inventory and they change it in the material car to solve again for new flux and k effective and group constant for a different burn of steps <coughs> uh, we are using a, a card named power c court uh, first we have to look to the logic of calculating the uh, uh, the if we have lattice calcul calculating the Bernoulli calculations, if we have lattice calculation one and calculated, first we will get k effective and the flux, and we can use the reactor power to normalize this flux. The flux is uh, we said that flux distribution on the flux spectrum is almost constant, but it moves up and down according to the reactor power. Okay, so we can normalize this flux to the reactor power. So the step we have K effective and we can use uh, the power to normalize the flux. So this power is calculated and defined from power C. Okay, uh, after that, this is for certain lattice calculation with certain density or certain initial atom percent for uranium and other eye stops but here we should take care of the fissile eye stops especially um, after that I can let I can let the core burn according to certain time interval we call it RTAU and calculate the total eye stops inventory if I am at the same flux which is as the same k effective flux okay use this flux to calculate the I stops inventory and this I stops inventory will goes up here again to calculate another flux with different at the same time step with different I stop M. So now I have two times of this kind, which are T A U. I have two kinds. I repeat that and I call the number of repetition as a cycles. As an example, if I take four cycles, it means I, I will calculate the flux and I stop the inventory, introduce it again to calculate the flux for the same K effect, by the way, and wait in R. RTAU and calculate the eye stops inventory for four cycles. So if I have four cycles, I have four multiplied by this time. This time could be in days or should maybe in days. If I set this time in days, so I operated the reactor for a certain power for a certain number of days according to this time and the number of cycles. If the number of cycles reaches the, the maximum number of cycles that I need, it moves it to another lattice calculation to calculate new k effective and new flux and it started to do the same for the next lattice calculation so we type it as like this power c power c one it means that my unit will be uh, um, uh, PQ, it means uh, uh, this is step one power C, which is Bernoulli step one. PQ means it, it the units of Bernoulli it will be megawatt day per metric ton. RTAU, which is this time, and INDNB is the number of cycles. If I multiply these numbers, which is the megawatt day per metric ton by the total time with the multiplication of these two numbers I will get the burn up in megawatt day per metric ton here as an example power C if I have a reactor thermal power is 300 mega uh, 3000 megawatt and the uranium loaded inside the core is 66 ton if I divide two numbers I get 45 
0.45 megawatt day per metric ton has this how to start the calculation if i want to burn the reactor at lower power i should put another power here like 1000 if the thermal power from the reactor is 1000 i can put here 1000 divided by 60 i will get smaller number so this is the megawatt day per metric ton if i take rtau which is a time uh, inside one cycle and here is the i n d and b is the number of cycles i take this number five and this number five i five it means five days uh, this is five cycles and this is five days so the total is 25 days if i multiply this number i will get the this number which is megawatt day per metric ton but look here this number is a fraction sometimes i need to calculate the pen up steps in the clear steps like 1000 2000 4000 uh, megawatt day per metric ton so i can adjust one of them adjust this number which is rteu instead of typing it as five i can type it as a uh, modify it as 4.4 .4. Um, uh, this will make it exactly 1000 so i type power c 1 pq uh, rtu equal uh, uh, 5 uh, sorry 4.4 and indb equal uh, 5 and the product will be exactly uh, 1000 uh, this number is clear uh, for for how many steps this is for step one how many steps i need I should think about the maximum discharge burn up from the core. If it's 60 megawatt day per metric per kilogram, I can convert the units into per uh, metric ton. So it will be uh, 60,000 uh, megawatt day per metric ton, uh, and this will give me 60 step, 60 repeated steps of this kind like putting here instead of typing power c1 i will type power c2 but with this same numbers or i uh, until i reach 60. for each burn up step i have different i stop the inventory and i have different group constants and i have different multiplication factor k because with changing the burn up steps i'm changing the material and changing everything even the group constants i stop the inventory and everything and they can use these results for this model to build console or open mc models with different group constants with burn up or i stop the inventory in case of you know, open mc with burn up how to write the wms input first we start with what we call it preload data Preload that uh, 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 we can type asterisk as we can comment. We can type the lecture one. This is lecture one, model one for VVR one thousand in the preload data. I'm making this as a comment. I can type many comments here. Uh, uh, now I choosing cell seven seven. In the geometry, we, we we mentioned that we use the cluster option, cluster option. So it is, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, according to the manual, if I type seven, so it is a cluster option. And maybe I have another option to build a homogenized cell, by the way. I can build a homogenized cell or uh, uh, another uh, super cell. I can build a huge uh, complete reactor to find the cross section outside the uh, reflector or something like that by the super cell so in the cell region here we use the cluster option which consists of an li and uh, arrays and sub roots and sequence one it means i will solve it using the sn method in the manual also you can find different numbers for uh, this uh, sequence two it will be collision probability method and sequence three here we choose sn method um, and using SN method, we have different degrees for solving SN method, like solving S4, S16, S32, S64, as increasing the setas or the differentiation uh, of theta. I will, I, I will get more accuracy, by the way. After a while, accuracy will, uh, the error will be small, very small. So I can, I should also you have to review the solution of the transport equation 
uh, I can choose here in the input S equal 4 or S equal 16 or S equal 64. I will get a difference in the calculation of the multiplication factor because it is accuracy. As, as I mentioned before, when I increase the segments inside my, my solution or the meshes or whatever, I will get more accurate result, but it will cost me time. Number of meshes. A number of meshes, as we mentioned before, we, we have certain number of meshes. If I put, I, 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 we already put some meshes in each array, um, uh, sorry, in each uh, analysis. Uh, so uh, if I add or sum all the number of, uh, of meshes uh, in each uh, analysis or sum the meshes inside the alinei, I will get this number. The first number is used with 65. The first number is used in the main calculations and the reaction edit calculations. Okay. Uh, a number of groups, which is 13. A number of groups, it means energy groups that I will use here in the few group card, 13 group, and in the partition card, which you use in the reaction edit, uh, is 13 also. A number of regions, uh, we have 11 uh, number of regions we have 11 uh, analyze uh, and uh, uh, also I have here I have the in the reaction edit and finally I can choose this number which is this number plus three three multiplied by the second number I will get 44 like 11 plus three multiplied by 11 is 33 so I have 11 uh, plus uh, 33 equal 44 and I have material four materials as we mentioned before two of them is fuel one is uh, material one and the three material one that contains uranium only and material three that contain uh, sorry material three oh yeah uh, contains uh, the uh, uranium with burnable absorber so if I have two fuel materials number of rods if I add all the sub rods the number of sub rods inside the one fuel assembly is this is the number which is 331 uh, rods inside one assembly um, here I, uh, uh, what is the division of the angles of symmetry inside my model it is minus 12 and uh, it's recommended to take number of meshes as uh, 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 for the um, uh, meshes and the angles as 111 for when the calculations and the maximum number of rods is 60 uh, i think in the last array uh, last uh, array we have 60 rods which is the maximum number of, of rods uh, that's it just for in rods this is related to the number of rods uh, in uh, sub rod card which is described by sub rod card a number of reactants, the number of isotopes that is uh, I put it before in the reaction in the react in the react uh, card, which contains it, the stops that require thermal treatment uh, for resonance or resonance treatment. The last card of the preload data is the uh, preout. It should be preout. You have to put finally here preout. After that, I use initiate card uh, to, here I put asterisk, it means command, first card in the main data. Now we are talking about the main data. In the main data, we have to define the coolant. Why I put coolant here? Because I defined it in the material car uh, with moderator spectrum. So I have the bottom of a separate card here to, say, to tell him it is this moderator and the coolant itself. Uh, as a case in the precise water reactors, uh, we have the coolant and the moderator, uh, oh sorry, light water reactors, we have the coolant and moderator is uh, light water, it is the same light water, so coolant and moderator is the same. Some reactors, we have different coolant and moderator, uh, so we have to put a different spectrum in the material car, as I mentioned before, three for the moderator and four for the coolant. And we start to put the analyst card, in, we, we, we generated it 
in in uh, alini, different alini with different radius and filled with water. After that, we put arrays. After that, we put root sub, and uh, I put it here in uh, in two columns. It should be directly after finishing the first uh, batch. We have to put the second batch directly. Um, uh, uh, previously in the geometry we said okay in the main data also we have to put the number of meshes at each array as we mentioned before the length of factor and the s s here is the order of solving sn method i type it at 32 you can put it 4 8 32 40 64 and so on uh, here I choose solving because we, we mentioned before that we used uh, sequence 1, which is SN method. Here I was uh, uh, S equals 32. Material 1, we defined it before, 2, 3, 4, we defined it before. And the few groups, which is the group structures. And here is suppress. I will want to see my results or in the output. If I put 0, it means that I need to see this result. Uh, here we have 16 numbers. If I put one, I will omit it. Uh, if I put zero, I want to see it. Zero in num in a chain number two, here we call that a chains. In a chain number two, it means that I want to see the isotopic inventory at each of number step. And the zero in the 14th number, it means that I want to show to see the uh, the group cross uh, group uh, multi group cross sections, uh, and finally I bought power C. Power C, but here I'm using a a very very small time for I stop inventory for one cycle. Why I did to initiate just to initiate the uh, run and putting the pack link to account for the leakage and the beginning. Beginning a card, it means that I finished my main data. After that, the edit data contains another partition. It could be different energies, but extracted from the same boundaries of the few group card and react to the, the uh, stops of considerations and the buckling. Okay, and beginning, it means end of edit data, which is used to for uh, reaction edit data. To account for burn up steps, I put power C1. As we mentioned before, the megawatt per metric ton, and 4.5 is the time inside each cycle, and 5 is the number of cycles to get 100. And beginning, first one means it. Uh, main data for this one and the edit data for this one and start power c2 until i finish the total number here i have 1000 1000 means i have 2000 i can type it as a comment as 1000 2000 3000 4000 and so that until i burn the fuel so i generated in the output i will find the group constants and i stop the inventory for all burn up steps for each per number step, I have the stops inventory and the. Yeah. If we look to the output from WEMS as an example, it chain two, as we mentioned before, I will find uh, the key for I stops. This is the key for I stops. Here I have four materials in the material card. Material one, which is was fuel. Material two, and each one has a different temperature according to our input. And I found, as an example, 16. 16, which is oxygen, have certain atom percent in the material one, which is fuel. And it doesn't present, uh, present in the clad. And inside the other type of fuel, which is fuel with gadolinium, it exists also. And exists also in the moderator, okay, so, uh, which is number four, material number four. So uh, this is a isotopic composition. This number uh, should be changes with burn up for fissile elements or the fission products. <clears throat> As an example, uh, if I look to um, uranium-235, a plutonium-239 
it has a certain fraction in the fuel material number one zero in the clad and it has another fraction in material uh, number three which another type of fuel of different gadolinium concentration uh, and it doesn't exist in the moderator so this is at one burn-up step i can monitor these concentrations at different burn-up steps to generate new material card for open mc later chain number 14 contains the group constants i choose a certain group i have the group constants the radial diffusion equation axial here i am solving it 2d so i don't have the difference between radial and the axial it's the same diffusion equation uh, diffusion uh, coefficient and they have the macroscopic absorption cross-section and macroscopic removal cross-section we can subtract them to get these group transfer cross-section and they have new sigma fissions and the effective flux and the infinite flux and k effective and k infinity this is for the first burn up these values will change it also in the second burn up step so i have the group constants for certain groups i can use it directly into console calculations using so the same group boundaries which is 13 groups but it will take time so we have we can condensate these groups into two or three or four groups as we want if i want to make condensation for the WIMS abs for the groups here i have the number of groups 13 and i have the division coefficient absorption removal new sigma fission flux first if i have if a for the diffusion a coefficient if i might apply absorption coefficient as an example by the effective flux i will get this number i multiply the uh, another absorption coefficient with its flux i will get this number so if i want to compensate in white what is in white i just should sum these values which is in white for the absor absorption and divide it by the total flux in this in this group uh, in these group boundaries okay so i have to sum this flux sum these values and divide the sum of these values on the sum of the flux to get the absorption microscopic cross section for this group and the same for the other group so now i divide it into two, two group and i can get the group what we call it the group constants two group constants here is the diffusion for the uh, fast and thermal the absorption for fast and thermal the removal from fast and thermal and the new sigma fission for fast and thermal and we can use it for the uh, directly for the two group diffusion uh, occur calculation using console uh, here is the faster flux i can sum all these values to get the fast flux and the thermal flux to sum these values to get the thermal flux then after summing these values for removal as an example for removal as an example we should after summing it we have to divide it by the fast flux because we are in the fast region and if we sum these regions we divide it by the thermal flux to get the thermal removal cross it uh, now we get the uh, WIMS condensation. Um, now you you have we, uh, to try uh, what we did today. Uh, I sent you to before the Excel file and send that input. You have to try it. Uh, repeat the model. Uh, we have some assignments to make sure that you understand everything. Repeat the model using 3.6% uh, uh, enrichment and T fuel equal 1000 instead of using the current enrichment just change enrichment and temperature and see what is the output your output the change in group constants and the um the changes in the i stops inventory uh, for different burn up levels um, number two find the fuel temperature feedback coefficient due to the an increase of fuel temperature from 900 kelvin to 1000 kelvin number three draw your uranium 235 and plutonium 239 atom percent with burn up steps like um, burn up steps is 1000 megawatt day per metric ton 2000 megawatts and so on 
So we want to draw, to draw the change in the depletion of uranium-235 and the buildup of plutonium-239, buildup and depletion of plutonium-239 uh, with burn-up steps. Number four, investigate the effect of burnable poison gadolinium on the cycle length via the analysis of K-effect. Um, gadolinium concentration, we, we can use it to increase the cycle length uh, you can recognize that by uh, monitoring the total burnup, uh, the total burnup, uh, and when the K effective uh, reach exactly one after burnup uh, steps, certain burnup steps, we can choose the uh, this effect of gadolinium in increasing by omitting the gadolinium from the fuel and put it uh, again with different concentration to see its effect on the. Uh, time to reach uh, K almost equal 1. Compare between uh, S8 and S64 for fresh cool. Uh, here, uh, as I mentioned, if we increase the order of S in SN, SN method, we will get better results. Uh, I want you to compare the results for the group constants and the K effective and the uh, for S equal 8 in one run, in the other run use S equal 64. Finally, compare between the collision probability method and DS me uh, DSM method taking S equal 4. Now, we in the sequence card, as we mentioned, we will use um, uh, sequence 1 but with S equal 4. And uh, in another run, you can change it. instead of typing sequence, sequence 1, you can type sequence 2, which means collision probability. And so the difference in the results was more accurate. S4 or collision probability method. Thank you.